In this inspiring demonstration, the 146th Fighter Bomber Wing display their might in the skies over the San Fernando Valley. A civilian component of the Air Forces, this Air National Guard unit, with its excellently trained ground and flying personnel, is a recognized part of the nation's M-Day forces. Administering the responsibilities of Wing Commander, Colonel Marvin G. Sturgeon assembles his staff for the mission that lies ahead, planning the summer field training at Boise National Guard Air Base. The defense of the United States is the primary mission of the Air National Guard. To accomplish this, the Air Guard must have well-trained airmen in every required post. The summer encampment at Boise brings new recruits who are experiencing military training for the first time. Some may feel that elements of this training are unnecessary. However, close order drill, learning to wear a uniform properly, and the practice of military courtesy build a mental attitude which prepares the way for the training of an individual so he will function as part of a team. As he has learned to handle himself and his basic weapon, the rifle or carbine, he is ready to work with the team. On an airbase, fire is the most efficient and dependable means of communication. To tie together the many units of a fighter-bomber command, many men are necessary. Specialty training in this field offers the young man of today many advantages in the Air National Guard. Foremost are the opportunities to develop skill and techniques through on-the-job training and formalized ground schools. Airmen preparing themselves during their first enlistment and qualify for advanced training in technical schools with full pay in grade while learning. Some airmen are veteran communication specialists who follow through on their civilian occupations. Many are new recruits who are interested in learning about this fascinating field. There are other phases of communications in an air wing that are interesting and important. Take, for instance, teletype. This method of communication links up the various commands along the defense perimeter. And radio and radar play a big part in today's modern air arm. Instruction, such as shown in this maintenance class, give our young airmen first-hand knowledge of what makes a radio tick. Another interesting air service in the 146th wing is its photographic laboratory. This section is equipped to process many types of aerial and still photographs, including gun camera motion pictures. Excellent training is provided in the technique of still photography, developing, printing, and enlarging. This is but another skill taught in the Air National Guard. Perhaps not as glamorous, but nevertheless of extreme importance, is the logistics of food. The enormous weight and variety of food handled by the service squadron would tax the resources of the largest supermarket. The procurement, inspecting, handling, and distributing of food is a first-class education in itself. Cook's helpers and mess attendants are assigned to the mess hall daily. The cooks in the air guard prepare dishes that compare with the finest served anywhere. Food service schools are conducted in cooking and mess management for those interested in the culinary art. It tastes good? Working up an appetite is no problem for these airmen at the summer camp, especially when it's good food, well prepared, and plenty of it. All the frills of the best restaurants are included here, and the men relax, enjoying congenial companionship with their meals. Off-duty recreational activities are encouraged in the Air Guard. Taking part in such activities keep airmen physically fit, and at the same time strengthen leadership and teamwork qualities. In addition to swimming in the camp pool, there are organized sports arranged for by the wing athletic officer. Dental care is administered by dental officers from home communities who are also members of the Air Wing. Air Guardsmen requiring such treatment are cared for by these professional men who attend the regular weekly meetings as well as the summer encampment to further their technical knowledge and military technique. At the Boise Air Guard base, F-51 Mustangs are used as training planes for the fighter squadrons. Rolling onto the flight line, they are being readied for flight mission. It takes many men working in their specialized fields of mechanical and technical proficiency to place a gun platform in the air. Behind each plane and pilot is teamwork. The 
ground crew who see that the aircraft is in proper operating condition, that the fuel tanks are fully serviced, and that all combat equipment is in readiness. The crew chief who keeps his fighter plane in top condition makes it possible for the pilot to perform his mission. The men work together as a team with the responsibility for keeping the aircraft ready and fit for takeoff at a moment's notice. In preparing for a gunnery mission, ammunition is first dipped in paint using a different color for each of the fighter pilots. Belts of cartridges are placed in the wing guns of the fighter planes just before they are ready for takeoff. When the round passes through the target, the paint comes off, leaving its mark on the target cloth indicating a hit. In the briefing room of the 115th Fighter Bomber Squadron, the operations officer explains the tactical training mission they are about to undertake. The mission will consist of air-to-air -air gunnery at 15,000 feet, dive bombing, skip bombing, and rocket firing. Our camera will go along to record the rapid action of the operation. Competition and rivalry for superiority is keen in the Air Guard. The 195th Squadron good-naturedly ribs the 115th Squadron with this bit of solemn humor. This brings a rather pointed, if not too subtle, response. Briefing completed, everything ready, the pilots prepare for their mission. The primary objective of all fighter organizations is to prepare each unit to conduct aerial warfare by raising its administrational and operational efficiency to the highest possible degree. The crew chief carefully adjusts the parachute straps as he briefs the pilot in any variations of performance of the plane. Switch on, clear prop. The pilot signals for the chocks to be removed. A good pilot and his ground crew never take chances. the takeoff, they lose no time in taxiing to the downwind end of the runway. The panel target is very carefully checked as it is laid out on the end of the runway, and a long cable is attached and adjusted so that it will not buckle under the strain of the takeoff. When the tow plane taxis onto the runway, the cable is attached to the release device so the pilot can drop his target before landing. The signal is given to take up the slack first, then the OK to take off. With the tow plane airborne, the fighter planes take off for their rendezvous in the sky at 15,000 feet. National Guard, a well-coordinated air arm, integrated into the air defense establishment of the United States, and sufficiently organized in California to carry out its mission of protecting life and property in time of disaster and other emergencies. As the planes peel off to make a run on the target, our camera records the action.
briefing runs are made in accordance with the briefing on simulated enemy convoys. Rockets are released on simulated bunkers. Returning to formation, the fighters peel off once more for the bomb runs. completes its mission in accordance with briefing instructions, they regroup and return to the base. Airfield, the tow plane drops its target and calls the tower for landing instructions. As the fighters drop out of the sky, each in its proper place in the formation, landings are made with but second precision. Intra-squadron competition is intense in air-to-air -air gunnery between the four squadrons of the 146th fighter-bomber wing. The winner is determined on the basis of average scores of all pilots in the squadron with 50 hours or more of flying time from the start of the competition. With their mission completed, the pilots report to operations for debriefing. Of course, there is always the post-mortem. Good shooting? I should say so. Just look at those happy flyers gloating over their hits. The different colored holes made by the bullets as they pass through the target identifies the pilots scoring the hits. These are tabulated for the final scoring. Arriving to attend the review is the Adjutant General of California, Major General Earl M. Jones. He is greeted by Wing Commander Colonel Marvin B. Sturgeon and his staff. They troop the line in company with the governors of two states, Goodwin J. Knight of California and Howard Pyle of Arizona. Assembled to watch are distinguished guests from three states. As the squadrons pass in review, the guests have no doubt on their minds that these officers and men deserve a great deal of credit for the high degree of skill they have attained during their summer training. Only an invincible Air Force, composed of these civilian defenders of human freedom, for ourselves and all mankind, will protect the political, economic, and social liberties which the entire world recognizes as something that spells America and all that it stands for. Mm -hmm.